In this video, you'll learn how to enable or disable automatic column generation when assigning a data source, how to manually populate the column collection, and access individual columns. Note that this session focuses on accomplishing these tasks in code. You can obviously do the same thing using the grid's integrated designer dialog and the Visual Studio's property grid, which is described in a separate video. The application initially contains a grid control that doesn't have any columns and is not bound to a data source. The project has a connection to the Sample AdventureWorks database. You can see it available in the grid controls data source wizard. But instead of binding the grid to data via the wizard, switch to code view and set the data source property in the forms load event handler. Now run the application to see that columns are automatically generated for every available field in the bound data source. If you need to only bind the control to data without automatically generating all columns, set the Auto Populate Columns property to false. If you run the app now, you can see a blank grid control again despite the fact that it is bound to a data source. Grid views provide a method that deletes all previously created columns and creates one for each data source field, much like the behavior you witnessed with the Auto Populate Columns option turned on. Run the application to see the column back in the view again. All the grid controls columns are the grid column class instances stored within the view columns collection. You are free to modify this collection as needed. For instance, you can remove the column that was automatically generated for the dealer price field. Now launch the app to make sure the column for this field is not there anymore. Now create a new column bound to the dealer price field. To move the newly created column to the first position within the view, set its visible index property to zero. Now run the application to check the position has in fact changed. Note that the added column's formatting has not been properly set to display the currency symbol. The same is true for the list price column. Take a look at the two different ways to access an individual column. One is by the index in the collection, since you know that the column you added in code is the last one. Another is by the field name, and this is how you're going to access the list price column. Set both columns format type and format string properties to apply proper formatting. Finally, change the appearance of the column created in code. As you can see, you can still modify the same column object that you added to the columns collection. Run the application again and see the change in appearance settings applied to only one column. 